Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, The Love of Her Life. This is the story of a young airman who makes a mistake, but with pleasing results, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, are you a service veteran? Then listen carefully. This message is for you. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will surprise you. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your skill to work and at a higher grade and higher pay than you may now realize. The Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in all the armed forces. And now, thanks to the new Career Incentive Act, you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage by returning to the armed forces as a member of the Air Force team. Write or visit your Air Force recruiter for the special Prior Service Man's folder. It's full of important details. You'll see why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now, your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, The Love of Her Life. All right, men, here's the reason I've called you together this afternoon. You all know that the Strategic Air Command's mission is to keep our B-47s ready to carry out air operations on a worldwide basis. In line with that, our wing has been scheduled for three months TDY. TDY? Where, Sarge? England. It'll mean plenty of work for field maintenance, especially for us in the radio section. So I want the section to be at full strength. If any of you men have leaves due, I advise you to take them now. That's all. Well, how do you like that? Hey, Jesse. Yeah? Jesse, how about that? A three-month tour of England, all for free. Uh, yeah, but don't forget, Ralph, TDY means tour of duty, too. Oh, I won't, but you can bet this is one guy who's not going to sit in the barracks on his time off. Hey, hey, speaking of time off, I better hustle up to the orderly room. What for? Well, I've got a 15-day furlough coming. I don't want to take it before the TDY starts. I'll see you later, Ralph. It was good to be home again, to see my folks. The time went by fast with all the things one usually does on a furlough, making the rounds of friends, relatives, and familiar places. And then one day, towards the end of my leave, my older brother Hank, he's in the Air Force too, first lieutenant pilot of an F-94, he stopped by for a day while passing through. So you're in SAC now, huh? Yeah, that's right. Aircraft radio repairman. Well, you couldn't have gotten into a better outfit. Well, I'm finding that out. Hey, by the way, I'm going to England in a couple of weeks. TDY. Is that so? England, huh? Hey, you know, I was there in 1951. Oh, yeah? You got any good tips for me? I was a sergeant then. Hey, uh, how long are you going to be there? Three months. Do me a favor, will you? If you get a chance, look up the town of Hereford, if you're not too far away. Hereford, huh? Well, uh, whereabouts is that? Southern England. I started something there, something I never got around to finishing. And... Oh, I think that's a call I'm expecting. Just a minute. Oh. There were more phone calls, old friends dropping by to see him, and then... The day was over and he was gone. Hank and I had had no other chance to talk alone again. <laughs> Maybe if we had, things might have been different. Several days later, I reported back to my base, and a couple of weeks after that, we landed in England. Just think, Jesse, merry old England, the land of Shakespeare, the Magna Carta, and Diana Dawes. All right, man, let's board the trucks. I know you're all anxious to see your new home. We certainly were anxious to see our new base. And after we got there, we're glad to find that it had all the facilities and comforts of our base back in the States. For the first two weeks, we were kept busy getting settled and into a regular routine. Hi, Jesse. How's it going? Well, just finished a pre-flight. Find much? No, just a broken HF antenna wire. Otherwise, things have been pretty slow today. Yeah, me too. For the first time since we've been here. 
Maybe now we can get a pass. I put in for one this weekend. Yeah, I did too. Hey, great. Where'll we go first? Oh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Well, there's a road map of England in our day room. Let's take a look at it. Come on. See, according to this, we're um, in the county of Sussex. Yeah, and we're not far from the south coast. Hey, wait a minute. The south coast? That, that reminds me of something. What's that? Something my brother told me about a town, um, oh, Hereford, I think is the name. Hmm? Somewhere in the south of England, he said. Hey, is this it? Down here, right on the coast? Let me see. <laughs> yeah, that must be it. Now, what's there so special about this town? <laughs> well, come to think of it, I don't know. All he said was to look it up. Mm-hmm. Eh, why not? What do we got to lose? It's not too far from here. We could borrow some bicycles from special services and go down that way. Hey, that's a deal. Look, I'll see you Sunday morning right after breakfast, okay? Okay, I'll try, but I better warn you. I always have trouble getting up from Sunday breakfast table. <laughs> I made a mistake. I should have never got up this morning. You mean you shouldn't have eaten so many flapjacks? Oh. Either that or we should have taken a different road. A nice smooth flat one. Real flat. Now cheer up. We can't be too far away now, according to that sign back there. We better not be. We've got to climb one more hill. I'm going to revise my flight plans. Oh, boy. When we get back to the base, I'm going to see to it that you get extra calisthenics or else cut down on your chow. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a car coming. Well, there's plenty of room for it to pass. Hey, hey, watch it, Ralph. You're going to go right into it. Hey, Ralph! Are you going to clear the way for me to pass? Clear the way for you to pass? Hey, Jesse, give me a hand. I'm all tangled up here. I'd like to ask Excuse you... Excuse me, miss, but I'd like to ask you something. Didn't you see us coming toward you? Of course I saw then you. Then why'd you try to run us down? Try to run you down? And you didn't miss by much. Yes, we were on the right side of the road. Plenty of room for you to pass. You were not on the right side of the road. You can't tell me I don't know the right I side from the... I don't mean to. I am telling you, you were on the wrong side. Jesse, I'm confused. You're not alone, Ralph. What are you talking about, miss? Simply that you should have been cycling on the left side. Really, it's utterly absurd of you not to obey the traffic regulations. It could be very dangerous. Oh, now she's telling us. I don't know how long you've been in England, but haven't you been told about our traffic rules? Uh-oh. Uh, yes, yes, we have. I, I, I just completely forgot. <laughs> me too. Uh, miss, I... I... <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. We'll get our bikes out of the way so you can pass. I hope you'll forgive us, but you see, in America, the right side of the road is the right side. I mean... <laughs> well, I, I guess it is easy to forget. I'm sorry I lost my temper, too. But it was such a close one. What is your destination? Perhaps I can help you. Well, we're on our way to Hereford, if we can make it. So am I. Why, how's that? You're going in the opposite direction. Oh, no, no. This direction's correct. Well, that sign back at the crossroads... Oh, you'd better pay no attention to that sign. It's been pointing in the opposite direction for as long as I can remember. Uh, if you wish, I'll carry you to Hereford. Carry us? She means a lift. Oh. Uh, sure, miss. Oh, Glad splendid. to. Uh, there should be room for the wheels in the back of my car. The wheels? Mm -hmm. How about the rest of the bike? She means the bicycles, you dope. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Uh. My name is Gail, Gail Davis. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Gail. I'm Airman First Class Jesse Adams, and this is my sidekick, Airman First Class Ralph Stack. How do you do? Hi. You from around here? From around... Oh, yes, yes, I live in Hereford with my father. He's the minister of this parish. Your father's a minister? Yes. Why? You sound rather incredulous. I am. For a minister's daughter, you seem to have a pretty hot temper. Well, I probably do. Why shouldn't I? Minister's daughters are human, too. Yes. Yes, they certainly are. Are you planning to visit someone in Hereford? Oh, no, no, no. Just sightseeing, more or less. Oh, very well. To show you there are no hard feelings, I'll guide you around. If you have no objections. Objections? I should say not. Right, Ralph? Oh, I should most certainly say <laughs> not. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> enough for today, Ralph. It's about time we started back. Oh, already, Jesse? Oh, yeah. We, uh, have got to be up bright and early tomorrow morning. Oh. Did you enjoy yourself? <laughs> well, we've seen the inside of an authentic English town, eaten fish and chips, had ourselves a day at the sea. What more could one ask for in one day? I'm glad. So am I, in more ways than one. Hey, I just looked at my watch. We'd better be getting back. 
Oh, must you? Oh, we'll come back, Gail. I promise you we'll come back. Won't we, Ralph? Oh, sure, sure. We'll come back. <laughs> We on the right road? Yeah. I've never seen that bombed out church there when we came. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you think Gail's quite a girl, huh? Oh, you bet she is. She's nice looking, all right. But different in a, a windblown sort of way. She's different, Ralph, and that's it. Yes, sir, I'm going to put in for a pass to Hereford again next Sunday. Hereford again? And what do you want to do, go back home after three months in Europe and all you'll have seen is a fishing town by the name of Hereford? Well, no, there are... A lot of things I want to see. Sure, sure. And you'll probably never again have as good a chance as you've got right now. Look, you've still got lots of time to go back to Hereford again. Well, I know, but... Look, yeah, 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 I know. She's a very nice girl and all that. But you don't want to seem too anxious, do you, Jess? Well, who's... All I... Oh, look, I'll tell you what. Let's put in for a pass to London this weekend and then the following Sunday go back. How about that? Well... Oh, okay, sure, why not? London it'll be. What Ralph said made sense. But I still had a feeling of regret that I wasn't going back to Hereford that weekend. However, later that week, I was surprised and happy to get a letter from Gail. Dear Jesse, I really enjoyed your visit to us in Hereford last Sunday. But, but there, there is still, still much of our town, town that you haven't seen and perhaps might enjoy. In addition, I should be glad for another reason if you could visit us this weekend. I would like to talk to you about something that might be of personal interest to, to both, both of, of us. us. Sincerely, Sincerely yours, Gail. Oh. Well, it certainly didn't take a long to write you, Jesse. Are you going? Well, I think maybe I'd better. Hmm? Okay. It's your funeral. Funeral? Yeah. As the old English saying goes, it looks like she has her cap set for you. Ralph was only kidding, but uh, if I had known then only part of what that letter would lead to, I might never have gone back to Hereford. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, The Love of Her Life. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. If you're a service veteran, think about this for a moment. Are you making the most of your service gained skills? Well, here's something you should know. You may qualify to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will be a pleasant surprise. The Air Force needs men with training and experience gained in all the armed forces. If you're skilled in one of the critical jobs needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put those skills to work to your best advantage. You've already earned credits toward a valuable retirement policy, so why not protect your investment? Your Air Force recruiter has a prior serviceman's folder that will give you full details. Write or visit him right away for your copy and put that service training to work for you and your country by being an airman. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now for the second act of the proudly we hail production of the love of her life. I remember well that Sunday morning I took off for Hereford. I'd seen many pictures of the English countryside, but to be set down right in the middle of it on a spring day, well, I guess a young man's fancy can be excused for turning to thoughts of poetry. I kept remembering the last line of a two-line couplet from a Shakespeare play we'd studied in high school the uncertain glory of an April day. It was April, and the day was beginning gloriously. And in no time at all, it seemed. Jesse, I'm so glad that you could come today. Yes, yeah, so am I, but uh, this, uh, this is kind of a surprise. This? Oh, you mean, the... oh, here comes Father. Dad, this is Airman First Class Jesse Adams, the young man I was talking about. Oh, yes, yes, how do you do, Jesse? I'm glad to meet you, sir. Were you able to attend my services? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I just got here. Uh, did you have trouble finding us? A little. Oh, well, it's not surprising. You are probably looking for a steeple or church tower. 
And to find a church in a shop may have set you wondering, huh? Uh, yes, I, uh, I was just about to ask Gail about it. Well, Jesse, this town hasn't always had a shop for a church. We once had a beautiful church. Not large, but big enough to attract the bombs of the Luftwaffe. Oh. Yes, perhaps you saw what was left of our church on the road leading into Hereford. Yes, sir, I, I believe I do remember seeing... But it was barely more than a heap of ruins. Yes, yes, it is now. It stood there for about 400 years. However, we hope one day to see it standing again. It's just very difficult to raise enough money. Well, you see, this is a small town and the people's incomes aren't great. But we have our hopes, don't we, Gail? Yes, Dad, we do. <laughs> I suppose you're wondering about my letter. Well, yes, I am. It's really nothing very serious. It's your name, Adams. What's so unusual about it? Well, nothing. That's why it never occurred to me to ask you last week if you happen to be related to a Hank Adams. Well, I have a brother named Hank. Really? Maybe he's the same one. What same one? I knew a Hank Adams once. Well, Gail, I'd venture to say there must be thousands of Henry Adams. Yes, yes, I know, but was your brother once in England? Yes. And was he a sergeant in the Air Force, stationed at London in 1951? Yes, and he told me to look up Hereford. Oh, then it must be he, who used to come here for the swimming and the fishing. And he was Dad's guest quite often. Well, how do you like that? <laughs> it sure is a small world. So you knew Hank. Oh, yes. What would you think of him? Some guy, huh? Oh, he's... <laughs> how do they say in your movies? A, a dreamboat? Oh, yes, a, a wonderful person. Yeah, I think so, too. I was very fond of Hank. He was... Well, he was the one real love of my life. We had some fine times together. Father liked him very much, too. He used to show photographs of the church to Hank. Hank often said he'd like to have seen the church before it was bombed. But he hoped to see it standing again one day. I hardly heard what Gail said after she told me that about Hank having been the one love of her life. All I could think was that Hank had once told me of an unfinished project he'd started here in Hereford. And that he must have been referring to Gail. That he still loved her and was probably waiting for the day when he could return to her. I wanted suddenly to get away. You have to return already? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just remembered I have to do some studying on a technical order. I... Well, I have a repair job coming up tomorrow that I... Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, so am I. But maybe next week, Jesse? Yes, maybe next week. As far as I was concerned, there wasn't going to be a next week. That was the last time I was going to see Hereford or Gale again. On the way back, I stopped at the ruins of Reverend Davis's church and, after looking about, sat down in the middle of the burnt-out timbers, thinking that the beautiful beginning of the day had changed, like Shakespeare said about the April day. And then suddenly I remembered the whole verse. Oh, how this spring of love resembleth the uncertain glory of an April day. Shakespeare described my situation as if he'd written that verse for it. But as I sat there in those ruins for a while, I, I began to feel ashamed of my selfishness. There I was, among the remnants of a real disaster, and all I could think of were my own troubles. I remembered what Gail's father had said, that he still hoped to see his old church standing again one day. And I remembered the townspeople, cramped into the tiny makeshift church. And then I got an idea. I hopped on my bike, returned to my base, and the next day got permission to see my squadron commander. Now, Adams, uh, you think that the men in the squadron should be asked to donate toward the reconstruction of this church? Yes, sir. Well, it's a very good thought, but rebuilding a church, especially an historic one such as this, is a project that would cost money. And I honestly doubt if pocket donations from a squadron could accomplish much. Oh, but, sir... However, I'll think about it and see what I can do. The following weekend, I went back to Hereford with the excuse to myself that I was doing it to inform Reverend Davis about my tentative project, but knowing all the while that underneath my main reason was I wanted badly to see Gail again. Reverend Davis wasn't home when I arrived, but Gail was. 
One lump or two in your tea, Jesse. Uh, two, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. So I, uh, I asked him if I could get a collection started to help rebuild your father's church. You did? Yes, but uh, don't bank on anything, Gail. He didn't seem too hopeful about it. He didn't think enough money could be raised. But maybe we can scrape a little together. Well, I hope you don't mind. Mind? Oh, Jesse. I, I, I mean, I hope you don't feel... This is how I feel. Like, like that? Like that. Oh, I, I, I think... Uh, what, Jesse? I, I think I'll... I'll have another... Yes? Another lump in my tea. To say I was confused after she kissed me would be putting it mildly. I was glad she seemed to feel the same toward me as I did towards her, yet at the same time I felt like a heel for coming between her and Hank. So at the first chance I had, I excused myself and returned to the base. The weeks passed. I managed to get in a few weekends in London. And still, I, I, I kept thinking about a town that had a lot more than London could ever offer for me. One day, after I had just about given up hope that my collection idea had succeeded, I was called into the commander's office. Adams, I suppose you've been wondering about the suggestion you made some time ago. Yes, sir, I have. Well, after I talked to you, I spoke to the wing commander about it. The wing commander? Yes, he was very much interested and decided to carry the ball even further with the result that it has now become a big undertaking. The United States Air Force, along with the RAF, is going to rebuild the church out of organizational donations. The whole Air Force, sir? That's right. And the finished church will serve as a war memorial to those USAF and British RAF personnel who served in Britain during the war. Oh, gosh, sir, that, that, that's terrific. Yes, it certainly is. Well, now we're only going to be here another week and a half, but even so, we're going to start a drive for funds among the personnel of our squadron this week. Now, I'd like you to... And the commander put me in charge of collecting for our squadron. Hey, that's pretty good. So the whole idea for it came from you, huh? Yep. I thought you'd given the gal up, boy. Oh, I have. But it isn't only for her that I'm doing this. Uh, now, uh, uh, how much can I put you down for? Well, uh, seeing that payday's the day after tomorrow, uh, count me in for ten. And I don't mean shillings. That's the way it started last week, with Ralph beginning the drive in fine fashion. And that's the way it continued. The way the men responded made me even more proud of them than I already was. And now, well, here I am on my way to tell Gail and her father the good news. From this hill where I'm now sitting, I, I can see the town of Hereford below me. In a few moments, I'll be going down there to put an unhappy end to what had started between me and Gail. Well, Jesse, this is very good news. I'm so glad to hear that the drive got off to such a fine beginning. <laughs> I'm glad, too. The only thing is, I'm sorry that tomorrow is our last day here. Yes, so am I. Uh, I mean, we, we could have done a better job on the drive if we'd had more time. I'm sure you've done well as it is. And you, Jesse, you deserve our thanks. If it hadn't been for you... Uh, uh, forget it, Reverend Davison. Well, that's something we can't and never will. Well... Uh, <laughs> I guess I've got to go back now. Uh, uh, goodbye, Reverend Davis. It's been good to know you, sir. It's been good to know you. God bless you, my boy. And thank you again. Goodbye. I'll walk with you to the village, Jesse. I've missed you these last weeks. You... You have, huh? Yes. I suppose, though, you were too busy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. L lots of things to do. Well, those B-47s uh, do a lot of flying, you know. Yes, yes, I see them often. Jesse, you said goodbye to Dad in there. Is it really goodbye for you and me? I hope not, because I want to see you again. And if you can't come to me, then I will to you, no matter where you are. Gail, I... You're not making it easy for me. Making what easy, Jesse? Now, listen, you, you... You've got to get those ideas out of your head. Now, you've got to. Then... 
You don't care for me. Well, I haven't the right to. Now, listen, didn't... Didn't you tell me once that you thought a, an awful lot of my brother Hank? Yes. That he was the one love of your life? Of course, and he was. There, there, see? No, Gail, Hank told me right before I left the States that he had something he wanted to finish over here. And I'm not going to step between him and you, much as I love you. Oh, Jesse. Well, I hadn't thought this was very oh. funny. Oh, Jesse, come back here, please. Well... If you'd have stopped to think before jumping to conclusions, you'd have realized that the kind of affection I felt for Hank must have been somewhat different from the kind I have for you. What do you mean? I am 19 years old. Didn't I tell you that once? Yeah? Well, your brother Hank was here in 1951, six years ago. And I was how old then? What? Well, 13, <sighs> so... Uh, oh. And as for the project Hank wanted to finish here, it must have been the rebuilding of the church. He was going to try to figure out a way, just as you did. Now, is it still goodbye? <laughs> no. If you can still stand the sight of a dope like oh, me. Oh, silly. I'll come to wherever you are. Oh, no, no. I, I, I think you won't have to. Our wing will probably be scheduled for another TDY here, but... If not, I'll come to you on my next leave. By then, maybe the church will be finished. Uh, just in time. In time for... For us to be married in it. And live happily ever after. Oh, yes, Jesse. We will be happy. Very happy. <laughs> Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Right now, plenty of former servicemen are discovering the truth of that slogan. They're taking a look at the new advantages available under the Air Force's liberalized re-enlistment policy, and they're signing up for a profitable, interesting tour of duty with the Air Force team. You see, the new Air Force policy offers a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments, plus a paid 30-day delay in reporting if requested. And listen, even before you enlist, the Air Force may be able to guarantee you technical training in critical skills. In some cases, this guarantee can be made even though you've been out of the service for more than a year. So remember, veterans, regardless of your former service or how long you've been in civilian life, you'll do well to find out about the new liberalized re-enlistment policy of your United States Air Force. Talk it over now with your nearest Air Force recruiter. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>